the garden and we are going to be picking cauliflower, kohlrabi, and cabbage. We are going to make sauerkraut and can it and we are also going to make pickled cauliflower and kohlrabi. And I did want to show you guys the high tunnel today. A lot of things are looking really good in there. There's been a lot of growth since we last showed it on the video. We get to see the garden every day so to us we don't always notice the changes but I do want to show you out there what it's looking like and how things have been going. We are just under 18 hours of sunlight now, so we're not getting quite as much sun, but it is still plenty of sun for the garden. First off, I am going to harvest the cabbages that we have ready in this row. This is a new variety for us that we are growing from a local seed company, and it did really well. It produced a head earlier than the rest of them. I also have red jewel and red integro growing next to them and some of those are ready some of them are not quite ready so we're going to let them go a little longer with all the recent rain we've gotten i do have a few that have split but that's okay this is more cosmetic than anything i'm going to harvest this one today and although these leaves are edible on the outside i'm going to just give them to the chickens and ducks on my way over to the other cabbages, I'm going to just point out a few things to you guys that are doing really well. First off is our beets right here, and they're doing excellent. I think we have a few big ones in there. This one looks like it's ready. Ah, it's a decent sized beet. So what we're doing is we're thinning them because beets and Swiss chard, each seed that you plant will grow three plants typically, and that is just too many plants in one little area. So we thin them. I've already thinned them a few times and I'm gonna come back through and maybe pick out the beets this size and let other ones get bigger. Usually we can get softball sized beets, so we will be hopefully storing those away in the root cellar over the winter, but this is a nice one for eating. So these are our Brussels sprouts and they're usually ready in the fall. They're starting to make their little buds. Right next to it, I have a nice purple cauliflower a lot of the cauliflowers and broccoli were a little bit heat stressed in this bed, but that one did do well. So this bed, we planted cauliflower and cabbage a little bit later, and they actually did better than the first round we did. This, I believe, is Red Jewel from Territorial. I absolutely love this cabbage. It always sets a really nice head, and pretty early. It's a little small. It's still going. This is the Integra, I believe, which takes longer, but it's another red head that's really nice. And what I do for cabbages is I just come through and get the outer leaves because they can you know, have pest marks. They can encourage slugs to get up to your plants. We don't have any slugs, but they also occupy a large amount of space and your plants don't actually need all those leaves that they'll put on on the edge. So it is a good idea just for maintenance to come around and get some of the larger leaves on the outside. We have three cauliflower heads here that are ready to harvest. They're a little bit lower down on the plant. Um, this one's got a little spot we're gonna have to cut off, but they look pretty good. Go ahead and pull this out. And again, I'm gonna be feeding the leaves to our chickens and geese. You couldn't always eat broccoli and cauliflower stems. We just tend to have extras, so they, the animals are pretty appreciative of it. This is a pretty nice head. It is starting to separate. I should have picked it when it was a little tighter. It also could just be the heat we had we had that really hot period for like two weeks of 80 to 90 degrees, which is very uncommon for Alaska. This one had a few little slimy leaves on the outside. Uh, this variety was more susceptible to it than the other varieties we've grown. And I don't think it's a huge issue. You just pick it off and then the inside looks nice. Overall, I'm really happy with the varieties we grew. We primarily grew seeds from Territorial Seed Company big fan of them since we were from Cottage Grove, Oregon, and we also grew MI Gardener and Denali Seed Co., which is a Alaska seed-based company. All three of them really have nothing bad to say about. Good value, very good germination rate, and their vegetables we got seem to do really well, so I'm very happy with all three of the brands. We're going to head over to where the kohlrabi is, and I just wanted to show you guys how the potatoes are doing. So that row right across from me is primarily potatoes. It's all potatoes except for some bee balm at the end. These are fingerling. Then we go to mountain rose and the rest are a variety we got locally. And those ones on the end, we've held them up three times. I generally don't hold them up after a certain point and just let them do their thing. They've been flowering and setting seed pods 
and they are just massive. You can tell they're almost about to fall over and we've never had our potatoes get that big. So we did dig some up the other day and they're doing well, but we can't wait until they die back and we can get our big harvest this fall. This is a purple Vienna kohlrabi, which is a new variety for us. And they've been doing really well. They're getting very big. We do eat the leaves sometimes, but if we have a lot of greens to eat already or other things we're eating, I do give them to the chickens and the geese. But that's a nice, really nice variety of kohlrabi. This is a green delicacy kohlrabi from Territorial. They do get a little bigger. We have already harvested a few of these purple ones, so we have a few in the house that we're gonna be pickling along with the cauliflower. One other thing I wanted to show in this outdoor part of the garden is that we have started a second sowing of certain crops. We've started certain, you know, oriental greens and spinach, and I did do some lettuces and radishes that will most likely have time to mature before we hit our first frost, which is generally in the middle of September. We are used to living where the growing season is a little bit longer, so I can usually get in two crops of cauliflower, cabbage, things like that. Here we didn't quite have that opportunity, so we are trying to make the most of the space we have and the time we have to grow. I'm gonna to try to grab all of these, or most of these, bring them over to the chicken coop, and then we'll come back to the high tunnel. We're gonna walk through this high tunnel and everything so far has been doing really good. Some of it's doing better than we ever got it to grow even in Oregon. I don't know how, maybe because of all the additional sunlight. I don't have the shade cloth on the high tunnel. We really don't need it unless it's maybe 85 to 90 degrees, which is not very common here again. So I haven't actually had it on. And some nights I do leave both the window and the door open just so insects can come in and out. But sometimes I do close it as well if I wanna retain some of the heat inside. First thing in here is our peppers. And we have quite a few different varieties. They're all seem to be doing very well. I haven't pruned them. They're setting lots of flowers and we really haven't had too many issues with aphids or bugs on these plants in here. If you come in, I can show you some of the peppers. This is a bell pepper variety that makes a really nice pepper that turns a little orangey color. These are banana peppers, I believe. They're starting to get big on the bottom. You can see these ones back here. And these pepper plants have all set flowers up top too that need to mature. And that's a new variety for us, that's Anaheim but they all seem to be doing really, really well. Eric and I need to come in here and harvest them. We're gonna be making pepperoncinis and some other things with them. And I believe if I come through here and harvest them, the other ones should develop and have plenty of time so we get quite a few peppers off these plants. These are jalapenos and serranos over here. We've got a banana pepper. So far, I haven't had any cross pollination that I know of. Right behind the still, I have our cucumbers. We have pickling, a slicing cucumber, which is what you're seeing here. These are the first to start being ripe. That one looks like it's pretty much ready to harvest. And then we have lemon cucumbers. I don't have as many of those. Those are definitely gonna be the later ones to mature. These are doing really well. That's a bush pickle there. And they are actually surpassing the height we allowed them. I did put up some extra string. It's definitely not the best setup, but it is working for this year. We're gonna have to revise that game plan. I've never had our cucumbers grow that tall, so this is a very exciting year for us with cucumbers. We have our temperature gauge right behind our nasturtium. Nasturtium grows incredibly well here. I don't know what it is about Alaska, but it does seem to get very big. This one's actually not as big as they get, and it's just nicely trellising up this little spruce log we have in here. Next, we have our corn. And if you can see, it's pretty difficult to walk in here. The corn has surpassed eight feet and it is bending over at the top. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with it trying to protrude or harming that plastic. It is six mil poly, so it's pretty thick stuff, but I didn't expect the corn to get that tall this year. The corns are starting to make their ears and they've already have their silks up top. And what I do is I come in here and I shake everything and it gets really messy, but all the pollen will then come down and pollinate the ears. 
And we do have good ventilation in here, but that's just kind of a extra precaution to make sure that those corn ears do get pollinated and we end up with a good harvest of corn. This is a yellow inferno corn. It's super delicious. I like yellow corn a lot. And the other corn we're growing is a white variety that is also a very super sweet good corn. All in all, our tomatoes are doing excellent this year. They are taking a little bit longer to mature than we would have had back home, but that's okay. We are primarily going to have them for canning. So fresh eating is not as important and they are setting lots of their flowers. The vines are all maturing really nicely. This is hillbilly, I believe. And then we've got Kellogg's back here, which have these massive tomatoes on them, but it does put a lot of energy into that so what I'll need to do is probably go through soon and prune off some of the stuff that's not going to mature in time. We haven't had any issues with blossom rot. I do put cow mag occasionally on these and I try to keep them evenly watered so I'm glad to see that hasn't been an issue this year. Let's go ahead and head up a little bit higher. <laughs> Most of these tomatoes have reached the height that they we wanted them to reach so they are about five feet tall or a little bit over that and I did top them off. And so what I mean by that is I went through and I cut off their top growing point because they will not have enough time to grow the way they could in another climate. And I really want them to focus more on maturing some of that fruit rather than to continue to keep growing. If you remember our tomatillo plants, they were pretty tall last time we did the tour. Well, they have surpassed the high tunnel now. They're actually about eight feet tall, which is a new thing for us, but they are setting plenty of fruit and a lot of them are mature lower. We should have plenty of these for salsa. These are going right now and they still have to get bigger inside of there. I went ahead and picked a tomato. They are really good raw, but we are gonna be using them primarily for salsa. We did have a little bit of a struggle with aphids this year or currently do have a little bit of a struggle. I did pick up some neem oil. I can't say I am 100% sold on it. It's not that I don't think it works. I do. It's just that I think once you get aphids, they're very difficult to eradicate. So being that this is a high tunnel, we've got humidity, probably some stressed out plants. I pretty much knew we were going to have aphids. The zucchini got hit the hardest behind me. And I think that's because they're on the south end of the greenhouse and they get the most sun. So if I don't have that shade cloth on, on a hot day, these plants will wilt because they are in pots. I went ahead and pruned them back. They're starting to regrow and they look a little better, but those did get aphids and our eggplants, if you remember, also had aphids. They look really good and they are starting to set more fruit. These plants were hit really hard by aphids at the beginning of the season. And even though they look okay, I don't think they ever made a full recovery. They are setting some of their fruit. So this is an eggplant here. There's a nice larger one down there. But for the size of these eggplants, I would expect at least 20 eggplants per plant. And we just don't have that this year. So on this side of the high tunnel, we actually have another tunnel within the tunnel. We did put some wire up to allow these to trellis even further. It's pretty messy. It's not the prettiest looking, but you know what? It's working for this year. We're already starting to harvest green beans. This uh, burgundy variety was the first to be ready. These are really nice green beans. They do cook green when you cook them. So that's kind of a fun thing. We also have a few other varieties going and then we move on to our shelling beans. So these are some shelling beans and a few of them. This is a Windsor fava. That one looks like it's ballooning up pretty nicely. And I will have to look up when we pick them. I don't think we pick them right now. I think we wait until they're dry if I'm correct. Maybe you guys out there can help me if you've grown these before. I did not realize that they weren't going to trellis. So next year we'll figure out a better system. But right now they're just kind of bushing and staying lower to the ground. This is Vortex and these are probably seven or eight inches, but they get to like a foot long. So we're going to let those keep growing. We're now entering our squash trellis area. I do have a few watermelons going. One of the watermelons is doing better than the rest. It hasn't. I think it's working on setting fruit, but I don't know if it'll mature in time. So it is working on growing, which is pretty cool because we are in Alaska. Next, we have our squash. We have butternut first. Butternut for us, the variety I got doesn't germinate the best and it's always the slowest growing. So I'll probably be looking into a new butternut variety if you have any recommendations out there. But these are doing well and they're growing. We next have mixed in spaghetti squash, pumpkin and acorn. 
We are more familiar trellising with hog panel or cattle panel. So the twine in here is not quite strong enough to support things like this that are very heavy. And one day we came in here and this branch actually fell down. So we had to strap it back up. Again, we're gonna have a whole different system next year, but it is working for this year. And the spaghetti squash are always the ones that are champions. They grow the fastest, they put on the most squash. This is a genetically <laughs> deformed squash. I don't really know what's going on with him. I don't know if it cross-pollinated in the past or something, but it is kind of funny looking. We've got some more spaghetti squash here, and then we move on to pumpkins. Now I wanted to point out that the base of these plants I have pruned them up quite a bit. That is for airflow, to manage aphids, and also just to be able to walk through here. We want good circulation, all of that. So they look a little not so pretty down here, but they are nicer up there. And we have them trellising across this arch with just that twine we talked about. This is a pumpkin. These are like little sugar pumpkins. They're tinier. So they're not going to get much bigger than that. I think that's actually their mature size, but they will turn orange. And lastly, I have a bush delicata type of squash and it is growing well. It's starting to set some of the flowers, but it just doesn't get very big. So this is pretty standard for it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the squash growth. In the past, we've had more squash set. So I think I am having some pollination issues with the squash in particular. I do have plans to put a fan up a little higher to keep some of the airflow moving where the flowers and the squash are trying to set since we pretty much missed a lot of the opportunity on the lower portion of these vines. Overall, I think we're gonna get plenty of squash, so I'm happy. And there are other things in the greenhouse that are more than making up for some of the stuff that's not doing quite as well. So when we first moved here, it was a little bit on a whim. We haven't talked too much about that, but we just went full force with this idea of moving to Alaska and we researched if you could have a garden here, which you can clearly, but your short, your season is condensed. So I want to say it's a little more intensive in that aspect. And when we moved here, I virtually just thought we weren't going to be growing tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, stuff like that. Some of these crops in here would probably do okay outside. Some of them wouldn't. We wouldn't have a long enough season for them to mature. Corn is one of them. It's not great for a high tunnel, but it's one of the only ways you can really grow it and get ears to set here in Alaska in our climate. So again, we're just very appreciative to have this high tunnel this year. It has made it possible for us to have these crops for fresh eating and for over winter, which is really, really valuable to me and Eric. And I don't know if you remember, if you've been following us for a while, the soil or the dirt or even rock, shall I say, that we're standing on is not very fertile at all, uh, would be my guess. And in fact, it is quite rocky. So we brought in yards and yards and yards of manure soil, and that is why I think things are doing good this year. Also the heat, I think the extra heat this year in Alaska has been helpful, but without that manure, I don't think any of this would have been possible. Eric and I are gonna be doing a garden review near the end of the season, where we're gonna go over varieties that we grew, what we'll do differently next year, maybe how we'll change some things, and just basically our whole plan for next year based off of this year. 